Right, welcome to this painting tutorial uh, for terrain. I haven't done one for a while, uh, but the Kill Team set has come along and the uh, the ruins that you get with that just look fantastic. So I've been busily painting my set up. I've just got two large pieces left, this one here, and then also the one I'm gonna show you how to paint in this video, which is this piece just here. All the other smaller bits have been done uh, just here. So I'll zoom in and show you the sort of effects uh, that we're looking to achieve. And uh, if you follow along in this painting tutorial here, uh, I'll show you from start to finish how to get these uh, results. But we'll zoom in on those in just a moment. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I, I like the colour scheme that you get. Uh, that they show you inside the book here and on the box, uh, the back of the box as well. So it's that uh, sandstone coloured uh, terrain, uh, the, the buildings, they just look great. So that's the colour scheme I'm going to do. I'm generally going to try and match. Uh, what Games Workshop have done, uh, their colour scheme that you see. I've sort of taken my own slight adjustments on it, but pretty much uh, as you see it there in the artwork. So this is the terrain uh, just here, and it, it really is nice. It does look very, very good. So uh, I plan to use this for my desert terrain, because uh, I don't really have any ruins for that at the moment. I've got plenty of other rocky outcrops and so on, some craters, and so uh, painting up in this colour scheme here should match in very nice. So I would say, uh, I, the set that I've done, I've followed the instructions that you get in with the Kill Team box. I've constructed it pretty much exactly as you see it. Uh, I haven't stuck the levels on top of each other because uh, the idea is that you can stack these up and put uh, the ruins on top of each other to build up the levels or to break them down uh, and do other areas like that. So I, I would recommend you do that. And it's just a case of being careful during a game not to, to break them. You could try and magnetise them perhaps in position, perhaps is one idea, but they sort of just sit there and they're only going to fall over if you, if you knock them enough. So uh, for constructing, I use, you can use the Games Workshop glue, but I've always uh, thought very highly of this stuff here. It's the Contact to Professional by Revel. Uh, so that glue is excellent. That's what I've used to construct these. It's very, very good glue indeed. So that's what I recommend there. Just a modeling knife and clippers. I just assembled it together. It does take quite a while, but uh, it's worth doing, uh, I think, especially to make the effort with terrain uh, is well worthwhile. So uh, with terrain, you can rush it if you want to, but I think it's, for me, I try and go for a balance of trying to get an effective result uh, but quickly enough. Don't want to spend too long on terrain. But then on the other hand, you don't want to rush it and make your terrain look terrible. So uh, the technique that you'll see here is, uh, I think the results are, are, are decent results, but it hasn't taken too long to do. I've actually got through this set pretty quick. And so uh, that's what I'll show you from start to finish here in this video. So I've just zoomed in here to give you an idea of the results that you can achieve. There's all sorts of shades going on there. I'll show you how to do each stage here and then picked out the metallic work here as well. So, you know, I think the results are pretty good here, but I haven't spent too long on this. This is a pretty fast a number of techniques I'll show you here in this video. Uh, another key, a number of key areas where you're gonna save a bit of time as well, uh, which I'll show you as well. But uh, that's one of the smaller pieces, just there. And then I've been working on uh, a larger piece here as well, but the same technique. I'm just gonna apply this exact same technique here to this larger piece that we're going to paint. I'm going to paint the larger piece here in this video because there's some other areas, some golden areas and so on that I want to cover in this. And also the colour on top here uh, for the floor plates as well uh, is, is not this stone colour, it's like a grey blue colour which I'll cover in this video as well. So material scent. Uh, Games Workshop Purity Seal, this is at the end. You want to put a decent varnish, I would highly recommend it that you give these a good coat of varnish uh, because you're going to be playing games and storing them and so on. You don't want the paint wearing off and so you, I would highly recommend a decent varnish. The Games Workshop Purity Seal is fine. So that's your spray. And then you see that the colour here, that base colour, and this is where you're going to save a lot of time, is uh, the Army Painter Spray. It's called Desert Yellow, it's the same colour I used to uh, spray my other desert terrain, so it's going to link everything in. So the, the trick is to not spray them the lighter shade, but not to spray them too dark. I'm spraying them the medium shade here, so you can go straight onto washes, and then from that you can go straight up to your highlights. 
uh, the medium color just remains uh, in the cracks and so on. Uh, if you go too light, then you've got to try and turn it down with washes and so on. If you go too dark, you've got to build up loads of layers to try and bring it up. So the key, which will save you loads of time, is to go for a medium shade here, uh, which is uh, not too dark, and then you can, we'll put our washes and so on to shade it, and then when we highlight it up later, it won't take too much effort either. So that's a crucial point here in this tutorial. So that's the uh, Desert Yellow here by Army Painter. Um, it's a decent enough spray, you can spray it on, and then you'll be able to put your washes and inks straight on top. You won't need to uh, do any other preparation. Uh, sometimes with like glossy primers and so on, you'll need to put a purity seal over the top before you can put your washes. Uh, but for this, uh, these sprays from my paint, I, I really rate them, I think they're very good. And you can just put your washes straight on top of that. So then for colours, add uh, Agrax Earthshade. I've got a big pot here, you do get through a fair bit of it. That's one of the key washes. Uh, Sarah from Sepia as well. Then uh, we have Baden Black, standard uh, black, which we'll be using to mix in. Then there is uh, Ceramite White, just just standard white. Don't have to use Games Workshop paints for those two, just standard colours. Shabti Bones is one of the highlight colours. Then, for the gold, we've got Gehenna's gold. At Runefang Steel, it's the very light steel colour, which we'll use to mix in later. Then there's Ironbreaker, Metallic, Dawnstone, the average medium sort of grey. And then also uh, Necron Abyss, that's the old colour. Uh, the new colour is called Kentor Blue. And then I've got a bit of stratum grey here. You don't have to use this one, you could just uh, add some white perhaps to the dawn stones. You don't have to get yourself a whole other pot of paint, but I mean, stratum grey is just the lighter shade of the grey. Uh, so just might make things be just sort of a, a highlight colour later on. So that's the colours, not too many. Uh, what is also going to save you time here, and it's pretty much copying what Games Workshop have done, is the metallic areas I've done. I'm not going to paint all the cables separately, you really could pick out all the details, go for different shades of metallics and so on. The more you do that, the more it's going to take up your time. So I've just gone for just painting all the metallics in the same, same technique for them. And all the walls as well, you could paint different panels and different colours, it's just going to take up your time. And so I think this looks effective enough just in this sandstone kind of colour. And then the, the rusty metallic effects around I think is enough. So again, that's going to save you time because you're, keeping your, you're limiting your techniques just to the stone and the uh, metallic work there. A little bit of gold, as you'll see, we'll introduce a bit of gold into it as well. But if you limit that as well and keep it sensible, that's going to save you a whole lot of time as well. All right, so we're on to our first colour here and we're going to go straight in with a shade. It's this Agrax Earth shade. Usually I do base colours, but the technique I've got here is just sort of a... I think it's a quicker way to do it this way, just... It'll be easier if you highlight, you'll see as we go along. But the first thing is the Agrax Earth Shade. So this is the darker brown shade here. And I've got myself, should have mentioned the brushes actually, but just a selection of brushes. This is a shade brush here. Uh, it's going to cover the, uh, this quite quickly. Don't want to spend too long if you've only got a small brush. So I would recommend you get one of these larger brushes. And just add a mixture of other brushes as well. So. We're just working this on, using the ends of the bristles just to stab into those skulls to make sure you get the, the eye sockets filled with this wash. You don't want too much wash on here, see it's starting to collect to the bottom, I'm going to pick that up there, take that away, suck that up. Now, what areas are metallic, what areas are stone, I'm just generally following what Games Workshop have, have done here. So these columns, just working that in, just stabbing it into the corners, like so, collecting a bit from the bottom here, like so. Now, uh, areas that are large areas of metallic work, so this here, this whole reactor thing here as well, that's all metal, I'm not going to bother shading that, I don't, there's no need to at all, so I'm just going to work around it, and I'll save you time and save your ink as well, which shade areas you don't need to shade. 
these windows. Just work the brush in and just stab it right up inside there. You don't want areas that have been left, it doesn't look very good. So it's worth just taking your time and working the brush in to make sure the shade gets in there. This isn't too, I mean, this is one of the larger pieces here. So, I mean, if this bit's quick, the other smaller pieces will be much quicker. So again, just working into this area. So, so I'll keep going here. Um, so it's up to you what you want to do about uh, these top bits here as well, these whole panels, no, along here, I mean, I'll show you this when I finish, but uh, along here will need to be done because that's stone and these bits. But the larger panels, you can leave them for now, they don't need to be done. Underneath, it's up to you what you want to do. Uh, the, the edges here, this grid, is meant to be the darker metallic. If you want to paint all that darker metallic, you can. Um, you're not going to see it during a game, so you may just want to put a bit of shading there or just entirely leave it. It's up to you, but um, I may just paint that in and leave it later on. So underneath there doesn't need to be done. But all this inside stonework, other than the metallic areas, can all be done as well. Um, so I'm just going to go around the whole of the model and get this bit finished. All right, so shading's been done with the Agrax Surf Shade, just gone over the whole thing. Uh, other than the large metallic areas, no need to shade them. Uh, that just gives you an idea what it looks like. So you've now you've got your, your medium shade done and your dark shading with the inks done as well. So that's two of the stages. Now what remains is just to bring that up with the highlights. There's two highlights we're gonna do. So the key will be to leave some of the medium shade uh, visible and then just to blend it in nicely with the highlight and then leave all the dark areas uh, shaded nicely for you. So you wanna wait till this is nice and dry before you do it. You don't want to pick up part of the ink as you're starting to do your dry brush techniques. The technique we're gonna do is the dry brush technique uh, here, there's a few hints and tips I'll share with you as we go along. Uh, you're looking to use uh, your large dry brush here is handy enough, or you can even use the same brush here as well, uh, the shade brush there. I'm sure you'll be able to use that also. But uh, dry brush, uh, I'm going to use here the large dry brush just to cover this larger area. And the first colour we're going to use is the Shabti Bone. This is going to bring it up to that nice sandstone sort of colour. So Shabti Bone. Just there. People, a lot of people ask, do you water down your paints? I do. I sort of maintain them in the pot, so I drop some water in uh, if they start to get a bit thick and shake them up and keep them going, uh, like so. So dry brush. You, if you go too dry, you'll struggle to get the paint on the model. So it's called dry brush, but you want to keep some moisture here. So sometimes it's a good idea just to put that in your mouth, <laughs> sort of. Uh, damp it down a little bit, uh, just to make it semi-damp, so that to help the paint flow on. Uh, but if you go too wet, it'll start to go watery, and then it will look wrong. So it's, it's a fine balance. Just practice, really, uh, is what you need uh, to get it just right. So you'll see me sort of adjust in the brush if it starts to get too dry. And sometimes it gets totally dry. You just wash the brush out, dry it as much as you can with tissue and squeezing it out, and then you'll be able to get away. You'll probably be able to get away with doing. Uh, a decent enough dry brush even with the bristles slightly damp it just helps that paint go on the other key is not to overload the brush uh, but we'll cover all of that as we go along here so I'm just going to use an old CD cover here and I'll just we'll do an area here we'll do this end column so I'm just going to damp my brush down like so just to damp those bristles. I'm going to take some paint here and then I want to get it onto the bristles. Nice and even. I think there's too much paint in there so I'm going to take then a tissue and, and lose some of the excess and then it's a case of just gently watching to see how strong this goes. This is shading okay. I'm flicking the tips of the bristles here onto this, not too heavy, and then you just move the brush further in to intensify it, and it looks alright. So, 
and I'm working the brush in. I'm just watching my progress here. Quite happy with that. Like so. so the shade, the really extreme areas are not being done. The shady bits, that's nice. And then some of the under colour still remains, especially in these recesses here. So I've managed to reach some of it with the shabty bone. And the strongest areas are these outer ridges and the rivet bits here, which is exactly right. That's the effect that you want. So it's still nice and dry here. And you should be able to look, I'll show you a larger window pane. In this case, flicking over the top. I'm really starting to scrub the brush quite hard now. Those bristles are working their way in between. Just giving it sort of a dusting. Like so. So there's the difference between the two. So I'm starting to run out of paint now. Sometimes you can put a bit of moisture on here. A bit of spit or a bit of water. Just to make sure that paint still flows quite nicely. And then we'll maybe run across the top here and catch these skulls. Onto this column. And down. So a bit of practice. You can get pretty quick with this. And then if you, you know, you can batch paint some terrain. Get the results pretty good. So in, in here, the solid, the panels here, like the plaster work, like this bit here, I'm just using the tip of the brush, so the, the brush coming straight on and then just working it in and being patient and you just get that sort of dusting on effect there uh, which is the effect that you're after. So that's pretty much all the techniques, just patiently working, you don't overload your brush with too much paint as you spoil it and then working into those columns and then prioritise, making sure I get a nice lot flicked onto the, the main edges, which is the areas that should be uh, darker or lighter. Just working all the way around. So, I just need to catch this corner a bit. Like that, so that's your effect. Now, I'll, I'll show you the second shade here uh, now and then I'll just apply the whole technique. So. That looks pretty good. I do like to add an extreme highlight to it. And this one you're looking to cover even less of an area. So I take the Ceramite White. Onto the palette. And I'm gonna let it blend a little bit with the, with the Shabti Bone. Don't stark white, it's too extreme. And I'm gonna make sure I take enough of this shade out. Need a bit more white here. Just a kind of off-white colour. Again, I think that's just a wary of having too much paint on the brush here. And then this is just a very extreme highlight, just covering these edges. So the extreme ends of the columns here, you can see I'm just picking them out stronger. And you'll just catch the other, the main raised areas as well. These skulls as well, uh, the edges of these windows. So you can see the difference between the two. And then areas like those skulls I want to catch, like so, edges of the windows, so on. It's actually very quick, it shouldn't take you too long, but that's the extreme kind of edge that we're looking for, just there. So that's the difference, that's the, that's the end product just there, and then that's the, the shaded area and it gives you an idea of the effects you can hope to achieve. But it's all about technique, and it's pretty quick. Uh, the dry brush technique's pretty effective. And as you can see that why we've not painted the metallic areas, they're just gonna get covered in the gold areas. There's no point uh, in trying to paint those and go neatly around. You wanna be able to move quickly with a dry brush. And then what we'll do is we'll pick out the other metallic areas after this uh, and then shade those and highlight them separately. I think it's a lot quicker to do it that way. But I'm just gonna go over the whole of this uh, piece of terrain here using this technique to get the whole thing highlighted up and done. All right, so that's done. It didn't take too long, but it's worth just taking your time, uh, stippling in the brush just to make sure you get that right effect. But that is the results there once that white highlight is gone as well. And I've done uh, the inside there as well. Uh, and you can see that's the original color. And then that's where you've worked around 
uh, stippling in with this uh, dry brush technique. So, I mean, that's pretty, that looks pretty good. I mean, you could use that in the game. If you didn't worry about these bits, you could, that just that technique by itself looks pretty good. But there's metallic areas now, so we want to move from this, and then to get this kind of result here, uh, as you can see, these metallic areas, which are quite clear. I've just followed along the instructions, uh, or the illustrations that you see inside the box of Kill Team, and also the back cover art as well, you can see it on there. That gives you an idea of where to paint. Just the metallic areas. Uh, the structure of these buildings like a metallic underframe, like a steel frame, and then plaster over the top, and the plaster's cracked away. So wherever you see that frame is where to paint. And then any electrical appliances and grids and ventilation, that's all uh, metallic as well. And you've got things like these large areas here. Also, the only other color that's going to be different is the gold. And again, just check the illustrations for that. But that's these golden eagles here. You can choose uh, whatever you want, but it's these golden eagles uh, here. They need to be done in the gold as a base color as well. So I'm just zooming in here just to give you an idea of the, the final results. But that's the kind of effect there. So you've got uh, your base colour, which is this colour here, and then you can see it partly on the eagle's wings, and then you've stippled in with the shabti bone around here, very patiently, and then with the extreme white just catches the extreme edges here, and then your Agrax Earth shade has done all your extreme cracks, and that's all been that's not been covered. Uh, by the dry brush because it's just flipped over the top so all the creases and recesses stay nicely shaded you can see all of the skulls there picked out as well so that's just giving you an idea we'll go on to the gold now we'll, we'll get these eagles painted up just to show you where to do with the gold first so what we'll do is show you the gold first of all it's just basically these eagles here uh, now this color on here this uh, stony color that's a nice base color to put the gold straight onto which is great so i've got my gehenna's gold Make sure to give the pot a good shake to make sure that pigment's moving around and it's well mixed. I've got an old base coat brush here and it's just a case of picking out, now the highlighting the messy work's been done, it's just a case of picking out the gold here on these uh, eagles here. And this colour is going on brilliantly. So, I'm just going to run that all the way around, like so. Right down, just trying to be nice and neat. And around the feet of this here, that light, I'm going to leave that, we'll do that in the regular metallic colour. Just making sure this eagle gets picked out here. And this Gehenna's gold, it's like a coppery sort of gold, you can choose whatever gold shade you want. Uh, but it's Gehenna's gold gone for here. Making sure I catch all the edges. You can go for a second coat if you want to, I don't think you have to. Uh, but I'm just going to thicken this up a little bit. That's alright, I just add an area of interest here onto the uh, terrain. So I'll just go around, I've got all these eagles to pick out here. Uh, and then also, it's not on this one, it's on the large one. There's an eagle on the big uh, door panel as well. Uh, but just follow the illustrations along. Uh, but one of the big doors, let's see if I can show you here. Uh, here, this eagle here is done in gold it's a metallic frame background and then the eagle in the middle uh, is gold as well here i'm not so sure about these but to do those in gold or just to do them in stone i'm not sure and again you can choose what you want to do just to save time may may well just do those in stone it looks like a stone work instead of an actual gold uh, for that one all right so that's the gold done and so like that pretty good so that's just one coat uh, sort of a generous coat there just working it in but it's an excellent base colour, this stone, uh, sandy stone colour here for putting that colour on. So that's that done, it's just these six eagles here, way around the door frames. It's not on every piece of terrain, but it's on this larger piece. So next uh, will be, because we're going to apply this, the same wash over the next part as well, uh, we'll go for the metallic areas. So I take for that the iron breaker, and then also... Uh, we're going to mix it with some abaddon black to make a darker shade uh, of the metallic colour and we'll highlight it up later. So I take, uh, I'm going to use our base coat brush here, take some of the iron breaker, put it onto the palette, and then you make up the shade that you want, but I'm going to add in some of the abaddon black 
just to make a darker shade of the metallic here, a little bit more black, perhaps a little bit, just short of 50-50 between the two, so slightly less black than silver. And then I'm gonna add in some water here as well, just to have a nice flow to it. In fact, a bit of black, it does look like about 50-50 here for your mix. But again, you can choose whatever shade you want. That looks pretty good. So then it's just a case of uh, all the metallic areas. It's a case of just picking those out. So uh, this large box here at the bottom, uh, just using the brush, just to work into all of the cracks to fill this in. So I fill that in. And then uh, neatly, neat areas as well. So all the edges you want to get neat. You don't want to go into your stonework and have to redo it. So here's a case of being neat. This large piece of terrain here will take significantly longer than the smaller pieces, but some of the smaller medium sized bits of terrain it doesn't take very long at all to pick this out, and it's nice to have some detail on your terrain picked out. So, just going around the edge of this, I'll zoom in here so you can see. So, just working on this at the moment. I really don't want to leave areas out, so I'm just working the brush air in here and stabbing it into all of the corners to make sure I have got all of this. Then what we'll do later on is shade this once and then do an extreme edge highlight which won't take too long. It's pretty quick but a pretty decent technique. So I'm just working the brush, keeping a nice shape for these edges, it's just going around nice and neat. Minor mistakes, there's no need to worry about. Big mistakes, uh, if you make one just quickly, wash the brush out, get some water on it, and try and wash the mistake away, just using the bristles of the brush. Just going around. It, I think it's worth making the effort terrain. The terrain that we've used on the channel was painted up, the urban terrain that we have was painted up about eight years ago, and it's served well. You know, so once you've made the effort with terrain, it can last a long, long time and get many good games out of it. So I, I think it's well worth making the effort. So just working all the way around. This is one of the larger metallic pieces here. Just making sure it's all stabbed into all the corners and right underneath. Along here. That's that filled up pretty good. And again, it goes on to that colour, uh, this background colour here, pretty good. So then you've got areas like uh, the cracks, and behind there's the metallic frame of the building. So I'm just going to push this into here, like so. So there's all there, those areas to do. All of, the, all of the pipe work and so on needs to be done with that as well. And then all of these grids here as well, need to be picked out, filled in, and then the sides picked out as well, and then areas like these lights as well. You can really go to town with these and take time on the lights and make them all uh, glowing effects on them and so on. I'm just gonna have them, because it's a ruin, the lights are probably gonna be out. I'll just fill them in with a metallic color and leave them like that. I think that's enough effort on this terrain here that we've, that we've done, but I'm just gonna go for all those areas all this piping here needs to be done, these large areas, uh, and then that'll be those areas picked out. All right, so that's the metallic work done uh, around here, so you can see uh, all the areas filled in. Just common sense, once you paint a few bits, you know exactly where to paint, you won't need to refer to the instructions, you'll soon see where to go. It's quite logical, really. Uh, these panels here, uh, and then all of the sort of electrical equipment and the grids and so on is the areas that you need to pick out, like so. But let's just create an area of interest on here. The main area is this sandy stone colour, but we've got a couple of metallic colours going on as well, uh, just there. So the next stage is to shade these. Uh, and what we'll use is Agrax Earth Shade. It's like a dark brown, so it'll bring out sort of a rusty, grimy look on the uh, dark uh, silver colour here. And then also it will shade nicely the gold, uh, ready for highlighting later. So we'll just shade these two. So uh, for this, just using the base coat brush, just an old one, and then just gonna let that flow into that. 
I'll shade that just nice. Again, I'll be quite neat around the edge, or do want to be neat around the edge, just to shade the edge, uh, but not to go onto the stonework that's all been highlighted. So that's why I don't want to use too big a brush. Just want some control to be able to pick out these areas. A little bit there on the end of the nose, just gone onto the brickwork, that's it. And just filling all that in on that one. And then it's the same stuff on the regular silvery metallic stuff as well. So onto that and then do an example here. All of this can be shaded in. That will shade that nicely. Again, it knocks it down a tone. It also adds a bit of rusty, sort of dirty oil kind of effect onto there. Like so, just run that around. Fill it all in, catch all the edges nice and neatly. We'll introduce a little bit of rust later on as well. All these pipes here on the end can be picked out. Just guide the wash in to all of the cracks here. And then just finish off on this end here as well. A little bit on that column, just rub that off. Any mistakes, you can soak them up or wash them off quickly. It's no big deal, it's just a wash. So that shouldn't present a problem. But just going around, so there's one that hasn't been done. There's one that has. So it just shades that down. And then what we'll do is we'll pick out an extreme highlight and that'll really liven that up. And it's a pretty fast technique. These areas here, they're all recesses. You can just flood them there with the wash uh, as well. So I'm just gonna go around the rest of the model now and uh, put the washes on uh, all these metallics to uh, finish that stage. Okay, so uh, I've got all of the darker silver painted on, just all of these areas uh, around here, so the metallic parts, the machinery bits, the piping, the vents, and then uh, the under structure here. So it's like plasters on top, which is just stone effect, and then painted in all of the metallic areas just around the edge, and then around here as well. And of course on the inside, like so. So on this particular one, there's a, well, they're all pretty much the same, but there's a lot, a fair bit of the metallic to do. Uh, so this patch takes the longest. Put a bit of, of the gold in here, the Gehenna's gold, just on those eagles as well. It's optional to do that. I've decided just to reflect the same style here. Just done them on the inside. The underneath, it is optional here if you want to. It's not really gonna be seen during a game. Uh, but I have given just a coat of that dark metallic metal underneath there uh, and then remembering to do all the edges around here it's broken away. This colour on top, if I show you the, the reference here, it's like this blue kind of colour. Uh, I'm going to try and replicate that, it's generally the same, uh, but again you're free to, I mean, you can do it the stone colour if you want to or you can change your colours around, do a different shape. But I think the blue looks quite nice, so I'm going to do uh, that next. So what I'm doing here, uh, it's like a blue but I don't want it to be too strong. Uh, the blue that they recommend here is the Stegodon Scale Green, uh, which <laughs> says it's green but it's like a blue colour. Uh, I've got the old Necron Abyss here which is Cantor Blue. Again you can change the shades, or use whichever shade you want. Uh, but I want a blue, but that is too strong, that's the right kind of uh, blue, but I want to make it nice and grey. So I'm going to take some Dawnstone and mix that in, and that will create the appropriate blue. And then I'm going to use a fair bit of water with this. That blue is about right. You can see that shade just there. That actually looks pretty good. So it's just a case of painting this on. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that colour. That actually looks pretty good. So uh, the edges where it bends down, it's quite easy to follow here because it, it's nicely sculpted for you. We'll add some ink washes and effects to this later on, but this is just the base colour. I've painted these rivets here already in the darkened metallic, so I'm just going to go around those neatly. Like so. And then this bit here, I'm going to a bit more water to this. I'm not going to be, on, I think, it being quite watery is going to look quite good actually. Don't want solid blue, it's got to have that worn out look to it. 
Got a little bit of blue on the metal rivet there. Don't doesn't really matter because I'm gonna highlight that again later on. But just with the brush strokes, I'm just making it sort of dabbing it on here to make a more natural sort of look. You don't want big long brush streaks like it's been painted on a more of a dappled effect. I'm just going around this here, nice and tidy. Remember, we've already highlighted all of this bits along here, so you do want to be neat now at this stage. So, just working on that. And you can still see some of the brown coming through from the base, that's absolutely fine. I'm glad it's doing that because I don't want solid blue, I want the old ruin kind of effect. And the grey has made that blue not so strong. It's kept it more of a natural tone. So just paint, filling this in. Painting that on. Again, you really do really want to be neat here. If you do make any mistakes, try and get it off of there as quick as you can. So that actually looks quite good, some natural scuff marks in there you can see. The way that's drying, a bit of the brown showing through. Yeah, don't want it solid, just want to shade that in uh, with this blue here. And we'll put an ink over that later on. But I'm just going to continue the rest of that. Uh, so remember to do all these edges as well. So it's the surface and it's also these edges as well uh, where it's all been broken away. Uh, just at the edge there as well. All right, so that's that color done. You see it's gone on there. Uh, so quite watery, so you can see some of the brown come through. I want to keep it sort of murky. Don't want solid blue look to it. So I think that's the right blue that we've used there. I've put some grey in there just to take the strength of the blue away. Uh, what I want to do now is shade it and then uh, knock down uh, the brightness of this here. So I'm going to use a bit of non oil uh, wash, uh, and then we may well use uh, the Agrax Surf Shade wash as well, sort of a double wash, and then just add a nice bit of depth to that. So when that's completely dry, uh, which that's virtually dry now. All right, so what we'll do, we'll put this non oil wash on first, and then when that's completely dry, uh, we'll go for some of the Agrax Surf Shade as well. So I'm just gonna use a wash brush here, and it's just a case of letting it wash on, and it can just, see that immediately tones that down. Don't too much excess wash though. Don't wanna make create puddles too much. Just wanna make sure it flows into all of those cracks. And you can shade all the rivets with it as well. I'll just lock that down a tone. Like so, you can nice, start to get a real nice dappled effect on here. Got a nice weathered kind of look here. Shading nicely. Like so, and again, just trying to be neat here. Don't want to uh, encroach onto the highlighting that I've already done. I'm just letting that flow in. So I'll do the rest of this here, and you can see that's immediately made an impact, turning that blue down. Okay, so that's dried. Like so, and you can see that's toned that down, it's knocked it down a level, which is nice. Uh, so I'm quite happy with that blue now. But we're gonna tone it down again. Agrax Surf Shade, now we can use this to uh, shade this, and again, being careful not to go over what the, the highlighted stone areas here. We're also gonna use it to shade the gold, and also uh, all of the metallic areas as well, just to shade that in. Uh, now, I'm not going for black. Agrax Surf Shade, just to make it sort of grimy kind of look, but it's still a very sort of dark brown shade. So it will shade, and sort of make a rusty, grimy look at the same time uh, for the metallic areas. So, uh, just using the wash brush again. Exactly the same over here. Just going to dab this in and it'll tone it down again. Another shade, yeah, this time with this dirtier brown kind of color. So you can see that going on. So it's a nice bit of depth to your shading here. instead of a solid color, just more of a going for more of an effect, which it would be. You can imagine all the rain and the sand and the elements and so on uh, just having that effect on this rooftop here. So just letting that flow in. Should just flow into all the gaps quite naturally. Being neat. Just soaking up any excess. No need to let that form too big a puddle. That's great. And it says there. 
Then there's the golden areas. So this will shade this in, because it's a brownie color, it'll go nicely onto that. So that eagle. I want to catch the edge, but being careful not to go onto the stone areas. Do want to try and be neat here. Just catching the edge of this eagle head, like so. Those scales already highlighted, and then areas like the uh, here. All of this can be done with this shade. Being careful not to go over the plastered edges. Like so, just working that in. And other areas will be uh, all of the metallic work. So all of this here, just shaded. Just stabbing the brush into these holes here to make sure the ink flows in and shades them as well. And then running around the edge just to key it all in to the building. Shouldn't take too long, but uh, not, not rushing it too much. Just want to be nice and neat with it. I'm just going to work that in. So you can see the difference there. That's the darker shade. That's where it is. Oh, that's the dark silver. And this is the area here that's had the wash put on it. And you can see it just, just blends it in. A little bit of brown on here now. Just blends in nicely with the rest of the uh, ruin here. So I'll just keep going around and get this whole uh, area. All these areas shaded in. It'll take a while. I've got all this metallic work to do. But uh, this is the final uh, wash now on this before the highlight stage. All right, so that's all the shading done. You can see there on the gold and on the metallic work here, and it's really helped to key it in with the rest of the uh, building here. So, been good progress. And then here on top, this bit's dry. Uh, and then I've just, that's the last bit I finished just around there uh, with that wash. But that blue's looking good now. And we'll just put a highlight on top of that, uh, pick out some metallic work, and then that'll be that done. So, stage we're at now is just some final enhancements to make here. So I want to chip the metallic work just uh, quite quickly, uh, but it will create a nice effect. Bring out the gold also, uh, and then finish off with this blue. And also there's a bit more weathering to do as well, technique I'll show you a bit later on. That's sort of the last bit to do once everything else is done. So I'm gonna do the gold here. I'm just gonna zoom in for this one. So for the gold, I'm gonna take the original Gehenna's gold. That's the color we put on here. Then I'm gonna mix it with the Rune Fang Steel, that light silver. Uh, to create a final highlight. About 50-50, just want a silvery version of the gold. Perhaps even less than 50-50, perhaps more silver here than the gold. Just mixing it up on the palette. There's the original and that's mixed with the silver. Then I'm going to take off the excess onto some tissue because this is going to be like a dry brush technique. And I'm just going to drag it over the top. Of this just to pick out here on the eagle, you should be able to see that highlight going on. Pigment's not too strong with these newer paints, so I'm going to do a couple of coats here. I'm just angling this just to catch the edges of this highlight with this brush, like so. But that's looking pretty good. So there's a difference you can see between the two, and there's the glint the highlight on that one and the, the one just below has not been done yet. So just around the talon. Just making that strong and enhancing that. I'm quite happy with how that's come out. Let's just do the other one. So you can actually go quite quick with this. Let's run that down there. Just being careful not to making mistakes and then just catching the edge of these wings. Like so, it's all shaded for you and all dump. Already, thanks to the washers. Like so, now if, if you really want to, you can go for an extreme highlight, you take even more rune fang steel, almost pure rune fang steel, and then just catch the extreme edges of this, if you wish. So I'm gonna add a bit in, I just think sometimes the extreme looks quite good. And just catch the edge of those wings. And that's looking pretty good. And I'll just catch the other one that's dry by now. Like so. So that's the gold. You can see there it is without the highlighting, there it is with it. And it's just 
it really has picked it up quite nicely so I'm quite impressed with that, it's come up pretty good. So I'll just go around uh, and finish the gold here on these and also the small uh, bits just here on the inside. So that's that done and I think that gold's come out really nice, really happy with that one so that's that finished. The next is we're going to do a similar technique with the, uh, the dark metallic here. I've got an old base coat brush, don't need a particularly fine brush to do this. Again, you're just dragging the highlight over the extreme edges here. Not doing the whole thing. I don't want to repaint this. I just want to catch the edges, to sort of make a chipping kind of effect. But let the contours of the design, just let the brush pick that out naturally as you go over it. You don't need to actually really paint this on as such. So I'm taking the iron breaker here and then just flattening out the brush. Like so, to sort of make a flat head on it. It's quite a good way of doing it. And then really I'm just sort of dragging this along the edges, so angling the brush just to catch the edge of here. Like so, I'm going to catch the edge of the cylinder. Just brushing it along, not repainting the whole thing, but just catching the edges. And then just going to, a little bit around now, I don't want to do too much. But I just want to do it like it's a natural chipping. Around there, just catching the edge of this. Bit underneath, been there, lights up here, just catch the edge of them, see that, catch the edge of that one, very quick this, it doesn't, you don't have to take too long, and then uh, this grid here, just drag the brush along that, and pick that out as well, so you can see the difference between the two, catch a bit of the piping, like so, and top up the brush, like so, and then catch the edges of this. It's easy to do, but it's a great technique. And then this here, just going to catch the top part of that. This grid, the grill along here can be cool. I'm not just going to scrub the brush on this, just to pick out some of the holes these screws have gone on the studs. Like so, just catching part of it. And then catch all of this. Scrubbing the brush across, running the brush down these pipes, just catching the tops of those. Top of this. So I've done a I've done a, a big area pretty quick here, but you can see that nice glint it's got to it. Uh, but you're still keeping your dark silver and your oily uh, wash that's gone in there, so you're just picking out the extreme edges. So that's this shouldn't take too long. I'll just go around all of this here, and again, same for these edges. Just going to scrub the edge of that. Picks that out just nice. So quite straightforward, pretty quick uh, here, shouldn't take too long. Uh, areas like this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave these here because I'm going to be scrubbing uh, and doing a dry brush technique on this edge here and I'm probably going to go over any silver I do, so I'll leave those, I'll do the same technique, I'll just pick out those heads there a bit neater later on, a bit more of a controlled approach to them, uh, but we'll do that after I put the uh, the highlight colour, the dry brush across the top of this. But as for the rest of the model, which is you know near completion here, you can go around and do this technique all over on the inside as well. Okay, so that's that done. You can see uh, the highlighting done around here. I've done all of the inside, like so. Got all the edge of this, and then around the other side as well. But that's looking pretty good now. And uh, we'll, we'll do a wash later on that sort of link this together even more. It's looking okay, but there'll be a final wash that we'll do that will uh, enhance this even more, make it just make it look a bit more grubby, uh, a bit more weather worn, which is the effect that we're going for. Uh, we've got one more highlight to do first, and it'll be this bit here on top here. Um, we'll use the administratum grey, and that's just to put a sort of a, a very dusty final highlight across this, uh, just to enhance this. It looks uh, the base coat's okay, the wash is gone, it's all right, but we'll do a final highlight on there uh, just to add a little bit more effect. As I said, I want to go for a very dusty kind of highlight here on this one, so you're really going to be scrubbing the brush, so use an older brush. Administratum Grey. I'm going to put it onto the palette first of all, get all the bristles covered in this, and then what's important is you take off a lot of the excess here onto tissue so your brush is, is very dry. Just looking to catch the extreme edge of this. I'm just going to very lightly dust this. Yeah, this is about right. 
So that's sort of a very dusty final dry brush. If I, where I scrub, it will gently add on a dusty finish to it. Just making sure I catch that edge. That's what I want to pick out. So you can see that there, it's just enhancing that. Scrub it over this. I'm just going to spin it around across the whole of this, but putting the main emphasis on these edges here. You can add a little bit of damp to the brush, just so if you put it in your mouth a little bit, just to keep it flowing. I don't want it getting clogged up and drying up entirely. But it's a fine balance here, but it's safer just to scrub out the excess onto tissue and then catch the edge of this. Yeah, that's okay. Just scrubbing it around, whirling it around these rivets. Just catching the edge of this. I think the camera's picking that up quite light. I'm just going to tone this down a bit here. Yeah, so what you're seeing is more realistic now. Uh, that's the kind of effect, but it's sort of a stone slab kind of effect here. We've got all sorts of colours starting to show through. Off camera here, it doesn't look too light. That's just nice. Looks good. See all different shades come from original base colour, two washes, uh, the blue, but it's nicely greyed out here and then this final dusting that's gone on. Uh, and I've, I've worked the brush around sort of this way, so protecting the work that I've already done, it's not gone onto this uh, stonework just here. So I'm going to do that, dust the edges here as well, all the way around, and finish this off. Uh, and then as I mentioned earlier, we'll pick out those rivets as well with the silver. So there it is finished. Uh, I'm quite happy with how that's come out. It's just dusted. You're looking to dust the edges here and not do too much. So you, uh, you're taking that dry brush, you're really scrubbing. As you swirl it around, the, it will pick up a dusting a kind of effect. Whatever areas you decide to emphasize and the edges, it will pick them up as well. And uh, that's the result that we've got there. And then just picking out the edge along here as well. Now, uh, we'll go now for the iron breaker again. And I just want to pick out these rivets. So just with a neater brush now. Uh, we're using one of these artist opus brushes here. But uh, just picking out these rivets like so. There's no need to... I uh, use a larger brush for this, but just quickly pick those out. They're already sort of grey anyway, so just a flick of the silver across them will finish those off. Like so. Then other, any other areas, like around here along this edge, this metallic area here, uh, you can pick that out as well if you, if you need to. I'll just do this. I can take a moment. Just run that around. Again, you can see I've taken a while doing this. If you want to save time, just to highlight the whole thing the same, but I, I, in the illustrations that Games Workshop have used, they've picked this out in a different colour. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, it's a nice idea, so I uh, decided to do that. Now, we're going to put a wash on. This is virtually finished now. We're going to put a wash on here just to link all of this together. So the blues, the stonework, the gold, uh, the metallic areas, all sort of separate areas at the moment. So the final wash here will just link this all together as one. We'll do that next. So I'm sticking with a size one brush here, the Artist Opus, just a sort of a, a, a brush of a decent tip to it, but a nice bit of flow. It's not the smallest of brushes. And I'm taking the Seraphim Sepia, it's the rusty colour. What I want to do is uh, just to let that flow, you're sort of painting this in and being nice and neat. So uh, let's show you, for example, around this light here. Uh, just here, I'll zoom in to give you an idea. So what we're looking to do, do this light here. Just add in a bit of rust. And then, where you think the rust would flow down. So I think it would, if it was raining and so on, the corrosion would flow down like so. So I'm just going to run a bit of that down. And I'm also going to run it uh, in the recesses and cracks. So I think where this join would be along here, I'm just going to flow some into that. And also going to fly it around the, the edge of the gold. And you see this will link the gold into the stonework. It will join the two together. You see that? 
then perhaps the, the, the gold would, there's a crack there, I'll fill that in with this, the gold would corrode a bit as well. So I'm going to run some lines, just run some lines down where some corrosion might drip down. And then also, you see here is some metallic showing through. I'm just going to fill that in a little bit with this rust and then let that drip down as well. Don't do too much. I'm just going to do a little flick over here, a few patches on the stonework, but not too much on that. Then I'll go down to this grill here, this grid. I'm going to fill in the area next to it with this wash, like so. But you see it's all starting to link in together. I'm going to let a bit of it flow inside this. Definitely inside this wiring. In there. Just to make it more grimy, more rusty. And then it would definitely corrode and flow down here. So I'm going to run some down. Like so. It's faint, but it's, it's there. It's just sort of trying to create a weathered look. Just let it flow around this. Again, flowing down. Uh, bigger metallic areas. I'm just going to put it in here. Don't disturb the, the pure silver highlight too much, but I'm going to flow it in between. And it'll emphasize that and give the metal more of a natural rusted look. Like so. And then I'm just going to flick a little bit onto this as well. Take off any excess, just give that more of a natural rusty look. So that's the process uh, for these skulls here on top. I don't want to go around each individual one. I'm just going to let put a bit of it around here and there. Don't need to be too fussy. Just try and go for a natural look. The other area is uh, these. I just slot the brush in. Flat down. Slot the brush in. Flat down. You're just adding in another shade, another tone, different type of brown. And I think it just makes the whole thing look better. I'm just going to flow a little bit underneath this and on top, and then a few streaks down there as well. And it's going to work way around. Uh, you can see, I just think that's got a, a, a better look about it. Uh, again, just flow it in there. Any mistakes you can easily wipe off just quickly. Looks so. No, I think that works quite nice. This is the final stage, this is the final finishing effect. So you're just creating a rusty effect. Remember to do your, your lines that drag down. Uh, let me show you an area here. So you've got like a crack running down here, fill the crack in and then just let some of those flow down. Like so. You can see that on there. Just shows you done a bit of work on it, and then after a few panels here, I'll shade in as well. So I'm just going to go around the whole of the uh, terrain piece here, just using this technique, and it just links the whole thing together. I think just that's a nice finish and creates like you've done a bit of work on it, and you're showing all these rustier and corros corrosion taking place, which is realistic. You send a bit of weathering effect uh, to the final uh, piece of terrain. All right, so that's that completed. Uh, that brown wash there has just helped to link the whole thing in together so you can see it there just rotate around and then on top just sort of around these bits sort of patches here and there across the highlight just to break it up a little bit rubber in to go in between all the gaps around here as well and all the rusty parts of the metal that's broken off the metal grid like so and then there's the inside all done as well and you can see the uh, the weathering here just running down the sides of the plaster work just there but i think just adding in that extra tone extra brown it helps to link the whole thing together and then gives you a nice bit of weathering here a different shade of brown as well i think that's worked out pretty good and that is the tutorial that's it finished uh this piece here has taken longer it's the second largest piece in the uh kill team terrain set so it's taken a bit longer to do this one but the other ones uh, are a lot quicker to do uh, so pieces like this don't take very long at all. Again, same technique being used for all of these. Uh, just here, that's the kind of results you can expect to get. But these should fit real good 
on the desert terrain boards that I have. Um, so very much looking forward uh, to using these in games. And by keeping them uh, broken up, you'll be able to do them in different configurations as well. So that's good that you've got that flexibility. Uh, the last part here to mention is to give them a coat of purity seal, the Games Workshop purity seal, the spray, and that'll help uh, protect them. Uh, they're going to take knocks, be knocked over, rub against each other and so on when you're uh, putting them away. Uh, you'll be stacking them on top of each other as well uh, in games, getting these on uh, like so. So you want a bit of protection, purity seal is probably the best thing. You can use a decent varnish that'll protect them and hopefully you get lots of gaming out of them. But there it is, that is the uh, tutorial on here on how to paint this desert themed terrain here for the Kill Team terrain set that you get as part of the box set. And again, just follow the technique step by step and you can achieve these same uh, results just here. Check out the other painting tutorials, terrain tutorials on the channel as well. And over on the Plus channel is the in-depth painting tutorial series available on there as well. But there it is, that's the video. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in next time.